Do you know what it means to have everything and lose it all in a single day? I do. My name is Job, and this is my story. I was the most important man in all the East, living in the land of Uz. I owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and many servants. Moreover, I was blessed with seven sons and three daughters. I feared God and shunned evil. When my children held feasts in their homes and invited their sisters to eat and drink with them, I would arrange for them to be purified. Early in the morning, I would offer a burnt sacrifice for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. On a specific day, while my sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the eldest brother's house, a messenger came to me and said, the oxen were plowing, and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabaeans attacked and took them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived and said, The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and took your camels. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. Yet another messenger arrived and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the eldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. I was devastated. In disbelief, I tore my robe and shaved my head. I fell to the ground, groaning in pain, for my greatest fear had come true. I took a broken piece of pottery and scraped myself with it as I sat among the ashes. My own wife said to me, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. Those were the words my own wife said to me. I replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, I did not blame God for any injustice and did not sin with my words. When my friends Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar heard about all my troubles, they left their homes and met together to come and sympathize with me and comfort me. All three were older than I. When they saw me from a distance, they could hardly recognize me. They began to weep aloud, tore their robes, and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with me for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to me because they saw how great my suffering was. I opened my mouth and cursed the day of my birth. I exclaimed, May the day of my birth perish, and the night that said, A boy is conceived. That day, may it turn to darkness, may God above not care about it, may no light shine on it. I began to question everything. Why is life given to those in misery and life to the bitter of soul, to those who long for death that does not come, who search for it more than for hidden treasure, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave? Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? My daily food had become sighs and groans like water. What I feared has come upon me, what I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness, I have no rest, but only turmoil. My spirit was broken, my days cut short, the grave awaited me. Mockers surrounded me, my eyes had to endure their hostility. I prayed, Give me, O God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? My eyes had grown dim with grief, my whole frame was but a shadow. My days had passed, my plans were shattered. My three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, came to console me. Like all friends, they intended to strengthen me in my suffering. They also offered their opinions on the matter, discussing why God allows people to suffer. They believed I was suffering because I had done something wrong and repeatedly encouraged me to admit my faults and repent so that God might bless me again. Eliphaz concluded that my pain was due to some sin I had committed and recommended that I seek God's favor. Bildad and Zophar agreed that I must have done something wrong to provoke God's justice and argued that I should strive to exhibit more innocent behavior. Bildad suggested that my own children had brought their deaths upon themselves. Worse yet, Zophar responded, Will your idle talk go unanswered? Will this talker be vindicated? Will your empty words silence others? Will no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, My beliefs are flawless, and I am pure in your sight. Oh, how I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you and disclose to you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides. Know this, God has even forgotten some of your sins. Surely he recognizes deceitful men, and when he sees evil, does he not take note? Yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then, free of fault, you will lift up your face, you will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. They assumed that my troubles were a sign of God's judgment, but I feared God and shunned evil. At some point, I grew tired of them. I told them, no doubt you are the only people who matter, and wisdom will die with you. But I also have a mind like you, 
I am not inferior to you. Who does not know all these things? I have become a laughingstock to my friends, though I called upon God, and he answered, a mere laughingstock, though righteous and blameless. But I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear me with lies, you are worthless physicians, all of you. If only you would be altogether silent. For you, that would be wisdom. Hear now my argument, listen to the plea of my lips. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for Him? Will you show Him partiality? Will you argue the case for God? Would it turn out well if He examined you? Could you deceive Him as you might deceive men? He would surely call you to account if you secretly showed partiality. Would not His splendor terrify you? Would not the dread of Him fall on you? Though He slay me, yet will I hope in Him, I will surely defend my ways to His face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance, for no godless man would dare come before Him. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I will be silent and die. Only grant me these two things, O God, and then I will not hide from you, withdraw your hand far from me and stop frightening me with your terrors. Then summon me, and I will answer, or let me speak, and you reply. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? I was ready to confront God and ask Him to show me my offense and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? Will you torment a windblown leaf? Will you chase after dry chaff? For you write down bitter things against me and make me reap the sins of my youth. You fasten my feet in shackles, you keep close watch on all my paths by putting marks on the soles of my feet. The suffering was too much for me, and I became bitter, anxious, and scared. I lamented seeing the wicked prosper while many honest people suffered. I wanted to confront God and protest, but I could not find Him physically. I told my friends, as surely as God lives, who has denied me justice. The Almighty made my life bitter. As long as I have breath in me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not speak falsehood, and my tongue will not utter deceit. I will never concede that you are right, until I die, I will not deny my integrity. I will maintain my innocence and never let it go, my conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. Eventually, the Lord intervened. It's incredibly hard to defend yourself when you are in such misery. My greatest pain was physical, I was covered in sores from head to toe, exhausted, and in excruciating pain. My pain was also social, because of my physical appearance and the community's awareness of my recent tragedy, I became a social outcast. People would cross the street to avoid talking to me as I sat on the ash heap at the edge of the village. Even the teenagers mocked me. My pain was also mental, I faced the anguish of not knowing why these terrible things were happening to me, especially since it seemed there was nothing in my past to warrant this. My pain was spiritual as well, and my spiritual anguish was far worse than any other, for I felt estranged from God. This was the truest and most excruciating pain. Suffering is far more agonizing if we believe God is distant and indifferent. However, when I finally got to speak with God, things did not go as I had planned. During my speeches, I asked God to speak with me thirty-six times. Finally, my wish was granted, the Lord spoke to me, saying, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man, I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone, while the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, This far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning, or shown the dawn its place, that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal, its features stand out like those of a garment. Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. I replied to the Lord, I am unworthy, how can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer, twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to me, Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's, and can your voice thunder like His? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath, look at all who are proud and bring them low, look at all who are proud and humble them, crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them all in the dust together, shroud their faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. Look at Behemoth, which I made along with you and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar, the sinews of its thighs are close-knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. 
It ranks first among the works of God, yet its maker can approach it with his sword. The hills bring it their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants it lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal it in their shadow, the poplars by the stream surround it. A raging river does not alarm it, it is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. Can anyone capture it by the eyes, or trap it and pierce its nose? I fell to the ground and said, I know that you can do all things, no purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak, I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The Lord instructed my friends to offer a burnt sacrifice and for me to pray for them, for he was angry with them because they had not spoken the truth about him. Both times that God spoke to me, it was in the midst of a storm. I was reminded by God that he is the creator of everything. God recounted his incredible work of creating and sustaining the world, asking me if I could match this work. The Lord concluded by asking if I was in a position to judge, saying it was foolish of me to think that he should explain himself to me. I was made to feel very small as God's servant. I was vindicated, but my three friends were severely reprimanded by God. The Lord said they had not spoken accurately about him. The remarkable thing about the two rounds of dialogue with God is that he still did not answer my questions. I prayed for my friends, and the Lord restored my fortunes and gave me twice as much as I had before. All my brothers and sisters and everyone who had known me before came and ate with me in my house. They comforted and consoled me, and each one gave me a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of my life more than the former. I had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand camels, one thousand yoke of oxen, and one thousand donkeys. I also had seven sons and three daughters. Despite all my suffering and questioning, I never lost my faith in God. In the end, I was reminded that our understanding is limited and that we must trust in God's greater plan, even when we cannot comprehend it. My story is a testament to the resilience of faith and God's ultimate justice. Reflect on this, even in our darkest hours, maintaining integrity and faith can lead to restoration and blessings beyond measure. Stay firm in your beliefs, for true strength lies in unwavering faith, especially when facing life's greatest trials. In the end, God restored all that I had lost and gave me twice as much as I had before. My life is proof that even in the most extreme adversities, keeping faith in God and integrity can lead to complete restoration and blessings beyond our understanding. And so, I invite you to reflect on your own life and faith in times of trial and pain. Remember that there is a greater purpose that we often do not understand. God has a plan for each of us, a plan of love and redemption. It is in Jesus Christ that we find the greatest expression of this love. Christ, the Son of God, came into the world to save us, offering us forgiveness and eternal life through His sacrifice on the cross. He knows our pains, struggles, and weaknesses. In times of tribulation, we are called to draw closer to Him, seeking comfort and strength. Open your heart to Christ, allowing His love and grace to transform your life. Trust in Him, even when the path seems difficult and dark, for in Christ, we find true peace and the assurance that we are never alone. He is the light that illuminates our darkness, the hope that renews our souls, and the certainty that after every storm, the sun will shine again. If today you wish to reconcile with our Savior, Jesus Christ, because you have strayed from His path, or you want to start a new journey toward eternal salvation, comment below, I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my only and sufficient Lord and Savior of my life. Until next time.